What's up, boys, and welcome to our 2023 LPL Spring Split tier list. Today, we are going to be ranking every single team in the LPL 1 through 17. And then on top of that, we will be tiering them into groups where I think the teams are of similar skill. The best team in each tier is going to be on the leftmost side, and the team that is the worst of the tier is going to be on the rightmost side. After we have developed our 1 to 17 list, we'll be comparing those teams our list we're going to be comparing our tier list to the odds on esports bet they have their own essentially tier list one through 17 based on the odds they gave every single team to win the split and we're going to see where some of the discrepancies lie between how i evaluate teams and how a sportsbook evaluates uh teams going into the split so let's get into it let's start with my tier list i obviously want to make mine before i really get into the odds before i look at the odds there so that i'm not affected by what i am viewing okay so for today's uh tier list we're going to do it a little bit different i think that generally when you do these tier lists it's normally more exciting to start at the bottom and then go towards the top so you start at 17 and then you go all the way to one um, because a lot of the the more boring teams are generally at the bottom but for lpl this year because jdg is such a strong team and everyone you know already predicts them to win the split myself included they upgraded their roster and they already had a fantastic roster uh beforehand ruler and knight joining jdg absolutely insane i'm actually going to start at the top here i'm going to start with jdg at the top and then work my way down because i think that that's a more interesting way to actually go about making uh this tier list because i mean obviously there's a lot of changes and i think when you get into the middle of the pack that's where a lot of the discrepancies are going to lie between most of the analysts i saw hysterics made a tier list and i'm sure i, I made sure not to click on it because i didn't want to see exactly uh what he was doing um but i think that that we're probably gonna have a lot of differences in that middle to bottom section of the lpl team because a lot of these teams had a lot of changes so it really just depends on how you evaluate um either former players that are coming back in older players returning versus like new pickups how do you view these teams being able to acclimate those types of players into the lineup so let's start with the number one team like we said jdg is my s plus team perfect boom jdg out of the way everyone knows what's coming next you have top esports with rookie another phenomenal team kept majority of the same roster they were second in lpl last year obviously they shit the bet at worlds but in lpl they were good for the entire year and i really think that they will stay at, at, at this level i think that they're a really really strong team so yeah I, th I think that these two teams should be the best two teams i'd be very surprised if everyone doesn't have a consensus jdg first top second um that's making these types of tier lists but hey if they don't maybe they have you know higher opinions of some of these teams that we have coming up next so third best team in the a plus tier that i have going first rng uh the, the kings of spring they're the kings of spring but they don't have xiaohu anymore so a couple things here for rng ming is still on the roster recently on leaguepedia there was a notification that ming um was moving to substitute um which was actually only happening for the first five days of lpl the first five days of lpl is before the the lunar new year before the break and a lot of these veteran players they actually start coming back i know uzi was famous for this they come back and they start playing in lpl after the lunar new year break so they miss like the first couple of weeks this year it's only five days worth of games so i believe if i'm check the schedule real quick yeah rng only has one match before the lunar new year oh excuse me they have two matches before the lunar new year most teams have one but rng has two so the first two matches won't include ming but after that he will be playing um and if just to to, to be clear when i'm doing these rankings i'm not doing them as like how i see the team's ending the, the regular split obviously if you don't make playoffs then you can't move up past there but what i'm ranking is like what do i think the standings are going to look like going into msi so after the sp split completely ends and playoffs ends what are what is the one through 17 uh you know breakdown of the team's going to look like what are the standings going to reflect at the end of the year okay so we got rng the first team in the a plus tier all right next this team's jumped up quite a bit we got weibo weibo made a lot of changes to their roster they now have crisp on their team they now have light on their team uh they now have xiaohu on this team karsa is joining not so hyped on karsa but the other three are huge signings um one thing that makes me a little bit hopeful because i was i was down on karsa last year I, I didn't think that he had a a great year it looked like he wasn't really just vibing with his team much the one thing that that i think is is pretty good here is that weibo has picked up a jungler from LDL who's really hyped 
Um, and his name is Kenny. Kenny something. Hold on, let me find it real quick. Yeah, Weibo Gaming. Kenny Chan. Kenny Chan, um, who's a hyped up Viet oh Hong Kong jungler. He's a Hong Hong Kong jungler uh, named Kenny Chan, who's really hyped up. And if Carson has a really bad split, they have somebody else who can potentially step in. I'm not sure of his level, but as long as as it's not Carson, there's enough talent on this roster that they probably will be will be decent you know it's very hard for me to see this team with solo laners of the shy Xiaohu and a bot lane of light and crisp really failing so yeah kenny chan could be could be seeing some playing time obviously we saw last year uh you know xlb replacing um karsa when he was over on v5 so i think that this is an interesting thing okay next team in the next tier moving up a lot oh no not them BLG. So I've got BLG moving up. Bin finally has a team. You have Bin, Shun, Yagao, Elk, and On. That is the that is the roster. I'm I'm a little bit scared of the bot lane. This bot lane might just run it down. Elk and On, they they might be the the reason why this team doesn't place top five but with the top side that they have been jun yagao shun was elo held on ig for the entirety of last year yagao obviously was a champion um in summer with jdg didn't perform the best in semifinals of worlds but he was very good for lpl standards so i've got yagao up there I, I think that that he's going to be solid once again and when you look at the talent that they have around bin now i think blg can make a jump up you know they could improve from being what i believe the ninth best team or 10th best team last year going into playoffs to to being essentially a, a five seed here all right next up we've got edg i know a lot of people are going to be high on edg but i think edg losing viper hurts a lot they have leaves stepping in he, he i saw him in debossia cup he looked mechanically proficient but he's not viper right like he, he, there's no way he's gonna be viper and i'm a little bit worried about the mid lane situation here obviously adding all into the top side over flandre that is an upgrade but fofo uh i don't know I, he, he never really hit the spot for me um over on blg so not sure about his form and fisher didn't look like he's super ready to be an, uh, an elite mid laner in lpl yet so I think EDG might take a step back. I don't know if they'll be making top four this split. I mean, to be honest, last, last spring, they actually played seventh. So this is this is a higher ranking than, than what they did last split in spring um, or last year in spring. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I'm a little bit lower on EDG than other people are. So this might come as a surprise to people. This might come as a surprise to people. But I have TT next. Pretty high ranking for TT. But I like I like a lot of their players, man. I like what I've seen. I feel like Yukal's really been good, and I think Hoya's been good. When you combine that with with Beichuan as well, you have a strong top side, and now you have you have Juan Fong in the bot lane. Look, if this team did not have Lucas, aka Jin Lu, you know, Jin Lu name change, he's still Lucas to me, man. Anyone who watched IG, he's forever Lucas. Any team that has Lucas on it, I I just can't. I really just can't vibe with it, man. He's like a slightly improved version of Southwind to me, where like these players just will die a lot, man. They will just they'll just run it down some games. They'll they'll die like 12 times in a game. It'll be crazy to see some of the numbers that they put up. So yeah, Lucas, it, it kills the roster for me, but everyone else on it, I'm actually pretty impressed with. I'm going seventh. All right, next. And if you see me continually looking to the right, it's because I have my my list over here um, that I, I am tearing off right now. I, I ended up doing this right before we decided to do this uh this video. Okay, so next up, I have LNG with Scout. So Scout has joined LNG. Don't have the the, the best bot lane or or top lane. Uh, Zika was not great in his previous teams. I mean, Zika with IG, he was he was okay. He was nothing special. He wasn't a, a massive standout to me. Um, but that being said, I don't think that he'll be bad enough to hold back Tarzan and Scout. Tarzan and Scout are such phenomenal players. They should be fine. They should be a playoff team. I just don't expect them to do much once they get into playoffs. Next up, my team with the ugliest logo. The ugliest logo known to man. Here it comes. Actually, I'm going to move them up a tier. They're actually in a higher tier for me. OMG, OMG, what did you do to your logo? Your old logo was so clean. It was just, it was like EDG's logo, you know, it just looked official. And now they came up with this. I guess that's an O and M G. Oh my God. It's tough. It's, it's rough out here for OMG. Logo might not be the best, but they kept majority of the same team. They essentially kept the same team um, outside of support. So yeah, from, from support coming into this year, a lot of people thought that it was going to be Jerry replacing cold. That's what I thought as well. And at the last moment, they ended up signing PP God here from V5. Now, PP God, he had the tendency to die a lot. He definitely was one of those players. He reminded me uh, a little bit of how Sword Art used to play on Sooning, where this guy will roam and he'll, 
you know sometimes over engage and and he'll have some dumb deaths but overall he's a he's a positive player he's a he's a, a positive to have on your team he's a profitable player he just has like you know some he, he has some suicidal tendencies in game you know it, it is what it is i think that he'll he'll help this team a lot they need somebody like him who's confident that knows how to transition those like early game laning leads and you know when they have these weird comps and they're able to, to get these leads they need somebody to be able to help them through the mid game and, and know which fights to take and and how to take those fights and i think that was really cold's job on this team was he was there to engage for them um but i think pb god is just a better version of cold so i think this team will be slightly improved but the thing about lpl is that a lot of the other teams above them got better too so i don't think that they get to jump up that much even though they were a ninth 10th seed um last year they might have even been eighth but yeah they were seven through ten they all play each other in the first round they were a first round team and they made a first round exit they finished ninth tenth last year even though that's the case i still think that omg will be solid i think omg will be a a solid team um, I think that they'll be good. They have high upside, but it's hard for me to say that they're better than any of these teams in A, A plus, S or S plus. Maybe they could be here. They could be like the best B tier team. But at the end of the day, these are all just first round teams. I, I, these are first round of playoff teams that are probably losing in the second round. But, you know, I, I'm going to watch every single game of OMG, man. I'm going to be there all the time. I'm going to be supporting them. They're my favorite team to watch in the LPL right now. You know, ever since they they signed Shanji and they started really like you know developing their identity of all these weird picks and they had unique champion pools and this really aggressive style ever since they started honing in on that i've been a fan of this team so i hope they do well this is the team i'll be rooting for the most in lpl this year they're my ninth best team all right let's move on and the last team <laughs> this logo i'm not used to we're gonna have to get used to seeing this logo so v5 has became ninjas in pajamas so v5 is no more uh ninjas in pajamas actually like bought v5 a year ago but they weren't able to change the name until right now so yeah ninjas in pajamas they finally have their name over here in lpl now rich is signing as the top he's he signed back as the top laner of nip but it's not clear it, it's unclear whether he's going to be the starter or invincible is going to be the starter i assume they're going to be splitting time and you know the better player uh, you know should win out the better player will end up being the starter i've heard a lot of good things about invincible specifically Bo has hyped him up a lot Bo really liked uh playing with invincible so we'll, we'll see how he ends up, up playing over there xlb is now the starter played a lot last year once cars started running it down dream dream maker he he's back in uh he's the starter now photic was one of the best ad carries throughout most of the year last year in lpl and Dro will be the support um because pp god has left and went to omg so i have them making playoffs you know if rich has a spring split like pop off kind of like he did last year and he becomes a starter maybe this team could could really do things but i don't know when, when i look at this team the reason why v5 was so strong is because they had rookie on the team like let's not kid ourselves rookie is the fucking man right like he he is he is a goat he he is the second best player of all time in my opinion to, to ever play this game you know losing that it's just gonna hurt you and even with him you know they were still like what a, a fifth fifth sixth best team in lpl so you, you take away rookie from this I don't know they're, they're gonna be lucky to squeak into playoffs here but but i have them doing it all right next up a team that i think a lot of people are pretty pretty low on um anyone's legend so anyone's legend was barely outside of playoffs last year they finished 11th 12th something like that i think they finished 11th um they had a seven and three record in summer and towards the end of summer they just had the hardest schedule and they just lost every game they weren't able to to win not only any series but they weren't able to win enough games to actually have a game score tie break over the teams above them it was tough man it was sad for for anyone's legend but you know they they upgraded the roster slightly in my opinion they got sword art on, on the roster which I, I think that that he'll he'll improve it i think sword art was was solid to have in the um lpl you have sword art with betty which is another narrative that you have right there sword art and betty used to play over um on flash wolves in taiwan and then you have uh zdz how how staying on the team and forge is no longer there harder is actually going to be the um starter now but yeah i think that the team it, it like i said with a lot of the other teams like these teams are improved but when everyone's improved relatively they're still in 11th you know everyone's better but they're they're just not better than any of the other teams comparatively okay next up yeah, w e w e with hope that's crazy man hope going from winning lpl to where i have him right now 12th in lpl that is that's insane i mean he played he played poorly at worlds for sure played poorly at worlds for sure i don't think that anyone doubts that i don't think anyone you know gives him much of an excuse but i don't know if he deserved to be on we man 
Like, I, I could have seen Hope on TT, and then maybe Huan Fong gets bumped down. I thought Hope was was good. I mean, he he had the first first like year in LPL in maybe like two three years from being back from EDG's youth team. He was solid, dude. He he was solid. It kind of sucks that he's on this this uh, WE team. Now, there's a chance this team could be decent, right? There's a chance WE could could be higher than this. When you look at their roster, like BBU's just whatever, but Hang is pretty hyped up. Shanks has shown potential to be a top player in LPL, like a top, you know, five, top six mid laner in, in LPL. And they have Iwambi on this team as well, who, who, you know, a lot of people wanted to see last year. Maybe the team will end up being better than this, but I do not have much hope for WE. And we'll leave it there. Next up. Kind of hard to see because I have the uh, dark background here. We got IG. We got IG next. I think a lot of people, they're low on IG. You know, IG has been receiving you know, a decent amount of criticism with their, their roster building. But I, I like what they have here, man. I like the fact that Gideon is on the roster. I think Gideon will pop off. I think IG is kind of in, the simil in a similar situation where their jungler is probably going to be their best player. So when I'm seeing this roster, I'm just, you know, it, to me, it just looks like, oh, yeah, it's Shun 2.0. Gideon is Shun 2.0. He's probably going to pop off. You know, he's going to have the ability to win some games for his team. But at the end of the day, you need more power than that to do well in LPL. Got them in 13th place. Not much more to say there. In D tier, I have FPX. It's sad, bro. It's sad. You know, I, LWX is solid. Jalahu is solid. Kara is solid. I don't know much about their jungler. I mean, they have a lot of academy players stepping in. Maybe they can do better than this, but it, it hurts, man. It, it hurts losing the players that they ended up losing, right? Like, even though I'm not the biggest Clid fan, they lost Clid and Summit. They were a bottom tier playoff team with Clid and Summit. They went from a bottom tier playoff team, which is ninth, 10th to a, a team that I don't think will make playoffs. Um, I expect them to go like 14th place. Next up, ooh, old fans of LPL are going to be mad at me for this. Oh, also, before, before we uh, go crazy with FPX, another reason that I'm low on FPX is I think their starting jungler is going to be Hacker. And we all saw how that, that turned out with Ultra Prime. That was rough, right? Like Hacker just, like he has no ability to team fight. He can play early game. He understands pathing. He understands gank angles. He has zero ability to team fight. He is, he is so bad at team fights that he will lose you team fights because of his inability to have team fight vision and understand like when he's in danger or when he's able to be engaged upon or when he should be the one engaging it's just like he is so negative for your team to have in team fights it's tough it's tough hacker is an l to have on your roster okay moving on ultra prime i've got them in 15th place they've got two world champions joining this roster two world champions you have ning joining in the jungle and baolan joining as support they just haven't played in like four years man <laughs> like they haven't played in, in what three years i guess i guess it's three years Wait, is it two years for, for Ning? Maybe it's two years for Ning. Baolan, it's been three years, I believe. Yeah, it's tough, man. It's tough. He was a sub for a little bit. He came back. He didn't get much playtime at all. Baolan's been been out of, of the scene for a while. And Ning has, uh, yeah, Ning has been off IG since when? Since the end of 2020. So I guess he took two years off. It's tough to come back a after that. And he was rough at the end of his, his time at IG. So not much hope here, man. It's, it's, it's a boomer team. I don't know who to compare it to. It's like, I wish that there was a team in LCS that had, you know, maybe a pair of boomers that I could compare it to, but I, I'm blanking here. I, I don't see anyone that, that, that I could draw an apt comparison to, but yeah, I, I'm a little bit sad to see this. It's really, it really sucks to see like LPL heroes come in players that are really good players that carried the region before seeing them come in and just be not it. You know, that, that's the toughest part. We, we saw it with uh, Uzi when he ended up stepping back in. He just wasn't the same. Um, and, you know, we saw it with Clear Love the year before where Clear Love, like, played a, a game of Sejuani and it was... It was tough. It was tough on EDG watching him play. Like, he literally looked like a master player playing in a pro game. It was tough. Um, so, yeah. Next, this is going to be pretty controversial. RA 16th place. But I, I've seen people put RA in playoffs on Twitter and stuff. Like, not anyone that, it, you know not anyone that, that that i really respect but i've seen just random like twitter users being like ra is gonna be fine they'll be they'll be in playoffs at the bottom of playoffs they always make playoffs in spring that type of narrative they have southwind on their team man southwind is the starting support for ra it's doomed you have southwind on your team every team that southwind is on is like automatically a bottom two team in lpl <laughs> like that's just it that's just facts any team that southwind is on is a bottom two team in lpl so ra is a bottom two team in lpl Boom. That's it. And then in last place, in 17th place, 
at the bottom i've got lgd it pains me man it pains me to put lgd last place because meteor is making his return for people that don't know meteor meteor was a extremely like carry focused jungler um for blg primarily and some people might uh, remember him even further back with like VS, Unite Gaming, just like uh, academy teams, amateur teams maybe. But Meteor was was a really, you know, proficient player. He was a good player for BLG for, for a long period of time. He was a carry player. He was somebody who played well with resources. He had a really insane graves. I remember when uh, Gale Force came out, I believe at the beginning of 2021, he was smurfing on graves. He had some insane performances, but I don't think it's enough. I don't think it's enough to, to carry this LGD team. You know, they, they kept Jin Zhao, they kept Hai Chao. I, I don't know. It's tough, man. I don't, I don't really know how this team could end up placing into playoffs or even being like top 13, 14. I mean, I think if this team ends like 12th, that would be a huge overperformance. I just don't see it. I don't see it with the roster. So there we have it. One through 17 in LPL. JDG first, top esports second, RNG, Weibo, BLG, EDG, TT, LNG, OMG, NIP, AL, W E I G F P X Ultra Prime R A L G D. That's the order. That's what I have for my rankings of LPL uh, teams one through 17. Now let's compare it to what Esports Bet has for their outright bets before the split what are the odds of these teams to win splits on esports bet let's compare it right, so now we've got my tier list done right above my head and on the right here i have the odds on esports bet so what a sports book has for their one through 17. um obviously they can have teams uh essentially that are in the same tier if the teams have the same odds that means that i'm essentially going to group them together but i'm gonna go ahead and read you their list one through 17 here so their best team they have jdg then they have Top Esports second, RNG third, which I have as well, Weibo fourth, and then this is where it gets interesting. They have EDG fifth, and I have BLG sixth, but I have EDG and BLG in the same tier. I think EDG and BLG are, are going to be similar teams, and outright, I think BLG is better, but based on what odds they have right here, you can see that EDG has 8.7 odds to win, so if you put in $100, you'd win $870 um, here with EDG, but they have 14.2 odds to one for BLG to win. So they think there's a big difference between what EDG and, and BLG will be able to put out. I'm interested to see if this ends up being correct. I'm surprised that there's that much of a difference. Um, EDG obviously has a, a lot of, you know, big name players. You know, Ale joining the team from LNG. That's huge. If he's able to maintain his form from playoffs, maybe they will be a, a phenomenal team. I just think that there's a lot of question marks on this team. Not sure how good Leave is going to end up being when he's playing against top tier players, when he's playing against players like Light, once he's playing uh, playing versus Gala, Jackie Love, you know, uh, he's going to be playing versus Ruler this year. All these types of guys. I'm, I'm a little bit unsure as to whether or not he'll be able to actually uh, perform at this level. So after BLG, 7th and 8th are both tied in their book. They have OMG and LNG both at 20 to 1 odds. So if we scroll down a little bit, you have LNG here and OMG here. 20 to 1 odds for OMG and LNG, which on mine, I think TT is slightly better. Their odds are only uh, 25 to 1 for uh, Thunder Talk Gaming. So TT is only slightly worse in their mind than OMG and LNG. But personally, I'm on the side where I think TT is going to really pull it together. I like Hoya um, in the grand scheme of things. I think he's a, he's a top half uh, top leaner easily. I'm, I'm unsure, dude. I would love if OMG is actually the seventh best team. You know, if, they, if they're able to make it out of the first round of playoffs, as an OMG fan, I'm fucking hyped. I, I'm super hyped if that happens. I'm just unsure as to whether or not that's going to be uh, feasible for them. I, I think OMG, you know, like I've I've watched them for a while you know, now. I've watched them for like, what, three years with the core of this roster, or sorry, three splits with the core of this roster. This would be the fourth split. And I'd be very surprised if they're able to make a breakthrough, but now they don't have cold anymore. They do have PP God. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe maybe they'll, they'll end up uh, outdoing my own expectations as a fan of their team. Okay. Now, 10th, 10th, 10th for them, they have Ninjas in Pajamas. I also have Ninjas in Pajamas 10th, but I have them at a, at a similar tier as the other teams that um, that I have in, in my, what is this, B tier? I mean, I said, whatever, the fifth tier here, uh, the B tier here. I think that they, they are similar to OMG, LNG, TT. Esports Bet has them at 50 to 1, 50 to 1. So they're significantly worse. Like they're, you know, more than twice <laughs> they're two and a half times less likely to win uh you know the split uh, of lpl as a team like omg surprising all right let's keep on moving on so this is a big one the next is a big one so the next team that they have 
on their book is Rare Adam. R-A. R-A is over here at 66 to 1. 66.666, repeating, of course. Uh, odds to win. They have them 11th. I've got them 16th. They've got them 11th. RA has done well in spring splits before. They normally overperform in spring. Leanne is, is obviously good. You know, Cube has an interesting champ pool. I just can't get past Southwind, man. I have them all the way down at 16. They've got them at 11th. So right outside of playoffs. Next, the next tier, they have three teams that are all at 100 to 1 odds. Ultra Prime, FPX, Anyone's Legend. So I have FPX, I guess 14, so it's like similar, but they have Ultra Prime up here as well. So FPX and Ultra Prime, they have them above WE and IG. So they think Hope is gonna be as low as 15th place. He's gonna win LPL one split, and the next split he's gonna be in 15th place rotting on WE. That's tough, that's tough. And FPX is gonna be, you know, they think that they're gonna be slightly better, slightly better than that team. I have faith in, in some of the individual players on WE and IG. That's what I'm looking at. When I see the quality of their individual skill levels, I can't see the rest of the team holding them back to that degree where they're not going to even be able to make like top top 14. Like that's what I'm asking. Can you guys make top 12, top 13 WE and IG? Yes, Esports Bet says no. ESB says no. They say FPX and Ultra Prime better. And not just a little bit better, a lot better. Because after this, the next team, WE in 15th place, 333 to one odds on WE. That's, they're saying they're never winning. <laughs> they're, they're saying WE is never winning anything. I, look, I think they're never winning as well. Are they really gonna be? They're, they're three times less likely to win, over three times less likely to win than Ultra Prime, FPX, AL. I don't know. To me, I think I think that's I think that's incorrect. I, I disagree. I disagree myself. Obviously, I would never take these bets because I don't think like it's not like I think that Ultra Prime. I don't think any of these teams will ever win. You know, these teams that are in the bottom. But I don't know. Three to what? Like three times? That's crazy. I mean, we'll see. We'll see at the end of the split. I, I really want to revisit this video at the end of the split and see where everything ended up uh, shaking out. Who was who is more correct? Were, was my tier list more correct or was Esports Bets tier list more correct? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, were their odds more correct? 500 to one odds, IG. 16th place, they've got IG. They think Gideon is shit. Also, Dove, where is Dove, bro? Like, Dove, Dove, Dove is not that bad, is he? Like, sure, he wasn't the best top laner, but like, he's back playing mid. He's not that bad. IG, 50, 16th place? 500 to one? I mean, 500 to one might be accurate. You know, if anything, maybe these numbers should be lower. The 100 to one should be lower in my mind. But... Is this player actually just like on the raw number? Are they going to be 16th place? Personally, disagree. Personally, disagree. I think that, that IG will be better than people expect. I think Gideon and Dove, Korean mid jungle, think they can get something done. And last place, we agree again. LGD, last place, 1,000 to 1 odds on LGD to win the split. Crazy, crazy. Surprised. I'm actually really surprised at that. You know, the odds are this extreme at the bottom, but it makes sense. It, ma it makes sense overall. So they're 1 to 17. Goes JDG first, top second, RNG third, Weibo fourth, EDG fifth, BLG sixth, seventh, eighth, tied OMG and LNG, ninth, TT, tenth, NIP, eleventh, RA, twelfth, AL, FPX, and Ultra Prime. Uh, they're all tied. Fifteenth, WE, sixteenth, IG, seventeenth, LGD compared to mine, where I have JDG first, Top Esports second, RNG third, Weibo fourth, BLG fifth, EDG sixth, TT seventh, LNG eighth, OMG ninth, NIP tenth, Anyone's Legend eleventh, WE twelfth, IG thirteenth, FPX Ultra Prime, uh, RA, LGD fourteenth through seventeenth respectively. So that's what we got. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, this new take on the tier list video, comparing my tier list to what the odds are over on eSports Bet. And we'll be doing these for LEC and LCS as well. So I'll be uh, creating videos uh, in the similar format. I'll be doing my own tier list and then comparing it to the odds on the books over at eSports Bet afterwards. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'll be creating more of this content soon. And yeah, after this video, the next video, we're just getting straight back into the co-stream. So it's just going to be co-stream videos back for LPL the day after this. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you later. Peace.